So today we're going to be tying the Mark Angler's Pike Fly. It's also labeled as the Durangler's Pike Fly on, on um, Umqua's website. But hey, let's get this started. So today I'm going to be using some red thread, Danville 200 tendonier, flat waxed um, thread in red. Try and trim off the axis. Then once you trim off the axis, what you want to do is you want to take this thread here. Oh, it's kind of not focusing too good. But you want to take that thread back here, all the way back. And make sure you cover the whole hook shank while doing so. Because we want to make sure this thread covers the hook shank. We don't want any of that exposed as much as we can. And get it about right here. I accidentally got a little too far. And we want to leave that for the head here in a minute. But anyways, what you want to do is you want to take these... I use EP fibers is what I do with these um, and I try to take these EP fibers and I make a tail on it too so I take the EP fibers trim off the EP fibers if I can here <laughs> There we go. Try and trim off these excess fibers. Get some scissors here. There we go. And what I do is I then wrap on these fibers here. Get them secured on there pretty good. Um, and yeah, you want to make sure this tail is coming out pretty good too. Um, and if you need to, you can always take your bodkin. And I like stroking out these trap fibers. Sometimes you trap some fibers while at it. I try to stroke them out a little bit. If that's the case. Um, but yeah, anyways, what you want to do next is... There's two ways you can do this. You can either... Oh, I forgot one step. So what you want to do is you want to tie in some... I use um, per, some Flashaboo in red. But you can tie it in other colors too. But yeah, red is a good color simply because it kind of fits the theme a little more. Um, and I want to make sure these fibers go in, these flash boot fibers, to go in opposite sides of each other. Kind of double them in. That's how I do them. And take those take them and wrap them in pretty good and then the next step is to take some uh, the last final step is to make the head so what I do is I take um, some rabbit strips here in red and I also take another rabbit strip here if you want to do one strip that's fine but I like doing two to kind of give it a little more you know variation and just go in one straight color if you know what I mean um, it kind of contrasts and I kind of like it a little better um, but you can go the original route and go the straight one color as well. But like I said, I kind of like this. And what you want to do is you want to wrap the the bunny strips one on top of each other if you're doing it two. You can wrap here. Oop, moved it a little bit. Keep moving it. <laughs> Basically, you want to basically wrap a little bit, little at a time. Um, having a hard time here, trying to keep it from. You want to make sure you then capture the rabbit strips in the front. But I, by all means, I do not recommend trying the two rabbit strips as a beginner because that is a little more tougher to do it that way. But if you do want to take the challenge of wanting to do two, go for it. I do highly recommend it. It makes a nice looking fly. Um, then what I do is I then wrap a good few 
wraps on this head to kind of give it a head on it. Give it, cover up all that rabbit strip here. And then I'm going to take this this head of this fly. I'm going to take it and I'm going to double whip finish over it to kind of give it a good finish. Because it, when pike hit flies, I like doing double whip finishes because when pike hit the fly, they actually hit pretty hard and aggressively. So I do recommend doing twice. And if you need to, sometimes I always, it never fails. Sometimes I always get a lot of um, trap fibers underneath here. I like picking them out again on this rabbit hair here. Kind of fully get all those rabbit hair out. Not, you know, trapping any of them. Because I don't like trapping them if I can. So, yeah. See, and I already had a few trapped in there. That's what I mean. You got to watch that. And as a final step, I like putting UV resin on the head of the fly. Or super glue will also work, but UV resin is a little quicker. And I put a little bit of this UV resin by Solarez on here. Called Bone Dry. Um, it's a very nice UV resin, makes a glossy coat. I have no complaints over it, and it always cures tack free. So I do highly recommend this over a lot of other ones out there. This is like by far my favorite UV resin. Now I do have a little bit of a tag in it, but that's okay. But anyways, once you get that on, what you want to do is you could take a UV light. Um, I don't know where I put my UV light. <laughs> uh -huh. Where I put my UV light. Anyways, you want to zap it with the UV light. And then... And then turn it off. And I usually rotate in my vise when you zap it, by the way. But yeah, that's overall how you tie it. I'm sorry I couldn't get my UV light for you guys, but that's how you tie the Mark English Pike Fly. And as a final step, one more thing I forgot to mention. You can do this if you want to, but I like trimming off a little bit of this tail here to kind of give it a little bit of an angle. You see how it kind of has a... It's not really that good. Let me do that a little more here. Kind of gives it that bait fishy profile and that's exactly how you tie this fly not too difficult to tie very simple compared to a lot of other flies that are pike flies you know yeah that's how you tie the mark angler's pike fly designed by mark angler he's also considered the the um the um the creator of the wd-40 i don't know why i'm losing my mind but yeah that's it that's how you tie it thanks